let's talk about crafting minigames. Crafting has become a vital part of a lot of different genres of games, and each genre has a different mechanical face that they put on crafting. For example, if you're doing a kind of survival horror game, you might craft special bullets or special medicines. Mechanically speaking, the point is to allow you to stretch your limited resources as far as possible. If you're playing something like Stormworks, you're building a whole boat, just the entire boat yourself, however you want it. That's obviously a different category of crafting, right? If you're in an MMO, you might be crafting mostly to sell it on the market board, which is, again, a different category of crafting. Mechanically, all of these serve very different purposes within the game. But they all serve the same purpose relative to the player. These are all alternate forms of play. When combined with other forms of play, it allows the player to switch play modes to serve their own particular needs. They can control their own tempo. For example, it's exhausting having to worry about whether a zombie is going to come around the next corner and eat you. You burn out pretty quick if you're entirely focused on the extreme survival side of things. That's why these games feature a lot of different rooms that are less dangerous or have predictable amounts of danger in them. And crafting is another way of doing that. When the player goes into their inventory to combine herbs, that's a moment where they don't have to think about zombies. Instead, they're just trying to figure out the best way to use what resources they have and get better resources out of them. And you might think that this is not very player-driven, because it happens when the player picks up more loot. But the thing is that players can almost always go back and pick up loot that they didn't get before. So if a player is really burned out on zombies, they're almost certainly going to say, you know, I'm going to combine these herbs and these herbs to clear up space so I can go back and get those herbs and combine them and get a little bit more of this, and then they'll work it out in their head, they'll go do it. It's a nice break from the taxing problem of trying to survive an infinite number of zombies. Similar setup here. If we're switching between piloting a boat and crafting a boat, how we switch depends on what we're trying to accomplish and what, we're, what mood we're in. If we're a hardcore crafter, we might craft the entire boat and only test it to make sure that it can be piloted. On the other hand, maybe we downloaded the boat off of the workshop and we only go into testing mode to repaint it. Those are both perfectly valid and everything in between is also valid. It's up to us as the player to determine what sort of mood we're in and essentially self-regulate. MMOs are built similarly. In theory, a crafter could buy all of their ingredients off of the marketplace and then craft and then put the result onto the marketplace forever. But the game is built to incentivize mixing and matching different kinds of play. You'll get a better result if you go out and gather resources rather than buying them off the marketplace. Similarly, you might need some resources that can't be purchased off the marketplace if you want to sell valuable stuff. Those epic level you know, drops in the dungeons can only be gained by you personally going out and doing it, because those drops can't be put on the market, but the things you craft out of them can be. All of this is set up specifically to incentivize swapping between gameplay modes as your brain requires. You can allow the player to self-regulate and self-pace and figure out what they want to do today. But if all of these crafting play modes are play, why don't any of them really have any play in them? 99% of crafting in games is finding a recipe that you want, making sure you have the resources to actually trigger it, and then congratulations, it's crafted. There's not really any play involved. There might be some constraints, like it might take a certain amount of time, or it might require you to be in a specific place, or it might, you know, have smoke or something that'll pollute the world, whatever it is. But there's no crafting minigame. This is never a minigame. Almost never. Why is that? Well, this is already the core play of the game. When we're crafting, we're thinking about the resources we have, and the resources we can turn those into, and trying to figure out an optimal way to do that, and maybe what other resources we might want to go get in order to you know, achieve the next level of this particular method of 
creating new resources. Adding a mini game here stomps on the fact that that's already the core play. That's already the play. It doesn't need to have a mini game added to it to just get in the way. And that is by and large the, you know, common wisdom of crafting mini games. Very, very few games feature crafting mini games. If you were to ask the devs, I've seen devs talk about the crafting mini games they added to the game and then regretted adding them and took them out. Uh, it's pretty common that crafting mini games are not considered good practice. They seem to get in the way, and that's exactly what they're doing, right? I'll give you an example. One of the few games that does have a crafting mini game is Final Fantasy XIV. As you're crafting, in theory, the quality level of the materials you're using will randomly vary from step to step, and you're supposed to keep on top of that and, you know, exploit whatever quality level you happen to get. But in practice, this wasn't very fun, and it wasn't very good, and nobody liked it, so Final Fantasy devs softened it and softened it and softened it until now you're just trying to get through the minigame. You rarely have to think about how to do the minigame. You're just going through it. This is true to the point where you can find crafting macros, and you can actually make them yourself. It's, it's part of the game. And that literally turns the minigame into a time tax. You're just trying to get through it as fast as possible. This is more or less the end result for every crafting minigame I've ever seen. They're just in the way. They eventually boil down to a time tax. Once you've mastered them, you're just trying to get through them. The other potential possibility is that you can't master them, and therefore you can't craft efficiently which is even worse. That just means that certain categories of player aren't allowed to craft. These kinds of minigames are not popular for a reason. They're just in the way. But does that mean that the whole idea is pointless? Can't we add some more play to this particular play loop? Well, Let's talk about one of the big issues, and that is the thing you're crafting. There are a lot of people who have come up with cool comic book ideas. Oh, look, the 900,000th person to get isekai into a VR MMO. Oh, what's this? They're crafting their very own bow using their very own techniques. They're crafting new potions using new techniques. They're exploring how to make new kinds of food. This works pretty well in a comic, because a comic is about one player, but the problem is that in an MMO, in reality, you need to be able to rely on what you're crafting. In fact, this is true even in single-player games. The whole point of crafting is that you get something that you're trying to get. Now, obviously, you can also do exploratory crafting, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but for the most part, when you're building something, you want to build the thing you want to build. If you are crafting a potion, it's really important that that potion have a known amount of potion-ness. If the potion varies depending on who made it, and it could be plus 50 HP, or plus 10% HP, or recover 1% HP, or recover 5 HP per second, uh, all of these variants make it very hard to use these potions efficiently in high-level play. So anybody who is trying to actually play the game has no use for these potions that randomly vary. They need a potion they can rely on. And the same is true of equipment and all the rest. And more than that, even in games where there are radically varying outcomes, for example, in Skyrim you can make yourself bizarre magic weapons, and uh, you know, in Dwarf Fortress you can make your shirts out of whatever material you want, and so on and so forth. Even in those cases, the point isn't to have a mini-game that determines how those things come out. The point is that you know what you're trying to accomplish, and you go and you accomplish it. If there is a mini-game involved, it's usually on the side of figuring out what ingredients can be combined at all. Like in Skyrim, you taste the ingredients and you learn what their attributes are. Once you know what those attributes are, you can combine them into a potion and you know what you're going to get. So again, the minigame isn't on the crafting side, it's on the ingredients side. 
it seems like it's an extremely poor idea to get between the player and what they're trying to craft, because them choosing what they're trying to craft is literally the entire point of the entire play loop. The crafting is about choosing what you want to craft given what you have, what you can get, where you are in the game, who you know, who you can sell it to, who you can provide for. That's the play. So interfering with that is a poor idea. This is why when we think about fun approaches to crafting, we're usually thinking about opening up spaces for crafters to explore, rather than coming up with ways to interfere with how they craft. I already gave the example of uh, Skyrim's various, you know, herbs. You grab an herb, you taste it, you get a readout on what it can do, and from then on, you can start to integrate that ingredient into your recipes. And they're balanced. So, I mean, they're not because it's Skyrim, but they're intended to be balanced. So you're not going to find a, a particular plant that is unavailable to other players or anything like that. You're exploring a possibility space but the possibility space is carefully contained. Similarly, if you're doing something like Final Fantasy XIV, um, maybe you want a really cool hat that is a specific color. Well, that's fine. You can just dye the hat. There's no minigame involved. The minigame does not actually affect the quality of the hat being dyed. You just dye the hat whatever color you want, and that's fine. The game doesn't care because it's not something that is going to affect the stats of the game. It's a way for the player to explore the possibility space, what dyes are available, how they want to look, how they want other people to look, but they don't have to play a mini game to get there. If, if they have green dye and they want a green hat, they know how to get from point A to point B. That's a decision they made. That's the play. Getting in their way would be, you know, poor, poor play. It wouldn't work out very well. Does that mean that mini games are just universally never going to be useful in a crafting situation? Well, I can think of one situation where a mini game might be very cool. So, a mini game that is pass fail or better and worse is always going to be a poor choice because it will just get mastered and boiled down into a time delay, right? You have to do the mini game this well or you are just being a bad crafter. But what if the mini game was just the UI for choosing what you wanted to do? Let me give you an example. You've felled a whole bunch of trees, so you've got a whole bunch of just raw logs of some kind. You want to turn them into lumber so that you can build stuff or sell lumber or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, right? So this is your crafting process. But this crafting process has a ton of pieces that can be changed. For example, uh, how efficient is it? That is to say, how many logs do you get? How many logs does it take to get lumber, or vice versa? This is obviously a dial that the game can set. In a survival horror game or a you know survival crafter game, one log might give you four pieces of lumber. In an MMO four logs might give you one piece of lumber. It depends on the balance you want, right? Another thing is how long does it take? Or similarly, how much secondary stuff is going on? Uh, how much smoke does it produce or whatever, right? By raising this efficiency in terms of the player's time spent or in terms of the conditions of the world around, uh, you can change what matters here. If it takes all day to turn a log into lumber, lumber is going to be very, very valuable. How much uh, saw? <laughs> if the player is using a custom saw to do this process, how fast does the saw wear down? How about other outputs like uh, branches, leaves? wood chips. We can keep coming up with a lot of different things about this particular transmutation. We're just trying to turn logs into lumber, but there are a lot of factors that we can add in to this process. 
Those factors do not have to be absolutely constant. Obviously, they do need to be balanced, but we can allow the player to change what their priority is. If we have a million logs, then maybe we want to shorten the amount of time it takes to process those logs, even if it means getting fewer pieces of lumber. If we have only a few logs, we might need to get as much lumber as we can out of them, even if it takes a long time. Maybe we need to get more leaves, so we just basically burn the rest of the log and maximize our leaf output. Maybe we are desperate to preserve our saw, or maybe this is a throwaway saw and we just burn through this saw in order to get better results. And this is all putting aside the idea of high quality versus low quality results and stuff like that. Allowing the player to choose how they're balancing this particular process will allow the player to have a different set of priorities depending on where they are in the game, what sort of resources they have, what sort of objectives they have, who they know, who they can sell to, all of that stuff. This means that the process of choosing what you want has become much more nuanced. Oh, so you want lumber? That's good. Oh, wait, I can choose whether I need to do this efficiently or you know whether I can spend more time or whatever else. I have a lot of other things I can tweak here. The play is suddenly a lot more dense and interesting. But choosing what exactly you want to do and prioritize from a menu would be really bulky. So the question becomes, how do we allow the player to choose from the various kinds of outputs they want without requiring it to be just a giant drop-down menu? Well, some of that can be done ahead of time. For example, if, if the player is equipping a certain kind of axe that specializes in going fast, well, then that's one of their choices already made. They've decided to go fast. That's the axe they got. But we can also simply allow the player to choose with a mini game. Not a mini game that's designed to be hard or annoying, but a mini game that is supposed to give the player a set of options at a fairly specific pace so the player can go the direction they want to go in a reliable way without having to fight through a dense menu. Now, how effective this is, I don't know. I would have to actually try it. <laughs> but this is the only situation I can think of where I would like to see a mini game. A mini game that helps the player to go the place they're trying to get, rather than a mini game that is built to challenge the player. Anyway, let me know what you think. Bye.